So far, when working with folds, we've seen that they replace two common types of um, recursion scheme. We've seen that fold R replaces the recursion scheme that we saw first of all. That would be things like the factorial, where you do something like factorial of n as n times the factorial of n minus 1, and you have a base case. So that's where the recursion has to go all the way down to the base case, and then when it gets an actual value it can evaluate, it evaluates all the way back up. So that's what fold R does builds up a big sort of call stack of uh, recursion calls, and then when it gets to the final value, it can actually evaluate and goes all the way back up to the top. Now, there is one exception where you can have something that exploits lazy evaluation, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Fold L is the sort of recursion scheme where we have something that calls a helper function recursively. That's one way you can think of it, where the helper function takes an accumulator and just updates every time so that we take the first element, update the accumulator using that, now we take a second, update the accumulator using that, and so on and so forth. So uh, left goes, takes the first value, moves all the way to the right, and fold R goes all the way to the right, and then evaluates back up. So these are two different ways that you can um, abstract away common recursion schemes, and that's why folds are so powerful, because they abstract away uh, very common patterns, and that's what we like in uh, functional programming. We like to abstract away things that are uh, very common and uh, appear a lot so that we don't have to write them out every time. But we haven't seen just how useful this can be with fold. We've replaced some functions and ones that are fairly standard, like products, sums, things like that, things you would expect to be able to replace with something that works through a list. But today we're going to do some that are maybe a little bit more involved, just so you can see that these can be more useful than uh, maybe made them so far. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace these four common but quite powerful functions um, from uh, the Haskell prelude uh, using folds. Now I'm going to try and use a mix of fold L and fold R's. You can use um, the opposite one for some of these if you want. It might be a good exercise for you to try later on. I'm just going to try and use a good mix so that you can see both have their place. So let's start off with element. Now remember the element function is something that returns true if it finds a given element in the list. So you give it an x and an x's and you return true if that x is in the list of x's. You return false if it's not in that list. So let's see how we would do that. So I'm going to do x, x's, and this is going to be equal to some sort of fold. I'm going to say fold l. I'm going to use here. Uh, we're going to need to give it some kind of function. Uh, we're going to need to give it an accumulator, and we'll give it x's. So let's think about what we would want to say. Uh, well, we know that fold uh, folds when um, if you give it nothing to work with, it would just return the accumulator. Eventually, it returns an updated accumulator. So if nothing happens, if nothing changes that accumulator, then that's what will be returned at the end of uh, the fold. So if we're searching through a list and nothing happens, as we don't find anything, we probably want to return false. So it would make sense to have false as our accumulator value because we want this to be the default answer if we don't find anything in the list. Then we need to give up function. So I'm going to use lambdas. I'm going to use lambdas for all of these, I think. So I'm going to say accumulator and it. Oh, actually, this should be y because this is something coming from the list. Maybe that's poor naming on my part. This could be y. Either way, we'll leave that be. So now I want to see what happens if y is equal to x. That is, we've found this element y, which is coming from our list, is that uh, equal to the value we're searching for. So I'm going to use an if statement. I'm not such a fan of ifs, but sometimes needs must. So if x is equal to y, then we need to return a value. And this return value will take the place of our accumulator. So if I've found that x is equal to y, that means I've found what I'm looking for, and I should return true. Else, let's have a think about what else. You might be tempted to say else false. However, this is going to update the accumulator at every step. So it's going to update true whenever it finds something. But if it finds something and then doesn't find it again, that doesn't mean we should return false because we've already found the element, so we want that to stay true. So what I'm going to say is, if we don't find the value, we just keep the accumulator. And this will mean that if we find the element, say the first element of the list, and we set the accumulator to be true, it will never be set to false again. And that's what we would want because we've already found the element. So I'm just going to return the value as is. So I never actually set anything to be false, except from at the start. So let's save that, reload this, and we'll try lm prime. So let's say we're looking for c uh, and uh, let's match some keys and there's a c in there so that returns true and if we delete the c out we return false so you can see we can quite easily replace um, element with a fold 
And that's pretty simple. Uh, it might be a good exercise for you to try that with fold R and see if you can get it to work that way. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward, I would have thought. Um, but let's try another one. So map is also quite an abstract function that just transforms one list of values to another type of list. So it's quite a powerful function to be able to define from fold. But let's have a look. This is going to take a function and it's going to take a list. So then we apply the function to each element of the list and that's pretty much all we need to do here. For this one I'm going to use fold R and I'll explain why I'm going to use fold R in a second. Now, the thing that we've not really done much of with uh, fold so far is returned lists. So with a, a fold R or a fold L, you can reduce the list down to just a single characteristic value, be that sum, the length, product, whatever it would be. Or you can keep the list structure using the cons operator. Um, but to do this, you need to think about what your base case is going to be. And the base case is often synonymous with the accumulator because the uh, base case would be what's returned if nothing happens uh, or if you don't have enough input to actually work through. Similarly, the accumulator will be what's uh, returned if you don't have anything to work through. So, for example, if you reach the end of a string and nothing, none of your program has taken place, then you'll probably just return the empty string or you might return a value of zero, that sort of thing. So here, what we want to do is think about what our base case should be and what we should build up from. Now, if I was going to define map, I would say it should be something like Math, map f of the empty list is equal to the empty list. And I would say that map f of x cons x's is equal to f x cons map f x's. Uh, that's a lot of uh, x's to say out loud, but hopefully you get my meaning. Either we would say that when we get the empty list, we return that. Otherwise, we cons the transformed element using f onto the recursive call. So my accumulator, in that case, should probably be the empty list because that's the kind of recursion scheme that I'm repl replacing with fold R. So I'll probably want to do the same thing here. And I'll put X's in there. So that's my list that I'm working with. Now let's think about what we want to do. Now remember, fold L and fold R, they take the accumulator in different order. Fold L takes the accumulator first and then the value from the list. Fold R takes the value from the list first and then the accumulator. So we'll want to say X and we'll want to say ACK. And then something happens. Well, I know that I want to translate x using f, so that should probably happen. And then I want to do something. Now let's think about what should happen when I reach uh, the last element of the list. So I should take, say the final value is x. I want to take that out of the list and I want to say that's now f of x, but I want to put that back into a list structure. So this should be f of x cons the empty list. But the empty list is just the accumulator, so I can just say f of x cons ack. So what this will do is it'll get all the way down to the final case where there's only one element, and then it'll translate that using f of x, cons that onto the empty list, and now the final element has been translated and it is, it is in its original place in the list. And then it'll go to the second last value, do the exact same thing, and then stick it on the front of the list again, so that'll be in the second to last spot, and it'll do that all the way through the list until we get to the end. Now if that seems like a lot to take in, we can just call this and see it work in practice. Let's do something wild, like we'll do plus one on the list, one to five, and then I'll hit enter. So you can see that I have managed to replace map using a fold. So you can see map has just an instance of a fold. That's how powerful folds are, or how abstract they are. You can use them to do quite a lot of things with lists. So let's have a look at uh, reverse. This one might seem tricky as well. So that should be reverse prime. It's gonna take a list and it's somehow going to turn it around. Now you might think fold R is the way to go here, and you can indeed define this using fold R, I'm sure, but I'm going to use fold L. So remember, fold L takes the first element of the list, does something with it, and then moves on to the second element, and the third, and then the fourth. Again, I'm working with a list, and I want to return a list value, so it makes sense that I should probably have an empty list as an accumulator. And I will take X's. So, what's going to happen in here? Well, it's going to take the ack, and it's going to take an x, and then it's going to do something with it. Now, actually, this one's incredibly simple, because if you think about the cons operator, the thing that we use to stick elements on, this wee guy in here, then it always sticks elements onto the front of a list. With the empty list, that means it's the only value. And then when you take the second element, that will now be the front of the list, and if you keep consing things on, they'll keep being put in front of the list. So really, since fold L works from uh, left to right, it takes the first element, does something with it, and then the second does something with it, third element does something with it, 
what I can say is this should just be x cons ac. If you think about the first case where I call this, x will be the front element of the list, it'll get const on to the empty list, so we'll just have a single list with a value of x in it, and then we'll take the second element, and that will be stuck on the front. So now the first element that we took will be at the end of the list, and the second element that we put, took will be second last in the list. So just by exploiting the structure of how foldl works through list, we can come up with a simple definition to replace foldl. Now let's uh, call this. So that should be reverse prime, and uh, we should give it less one to five, just because why not? And if we hit enter, there we get the, the list reversed. So that's quite a simple way to replace um, the reverse function using fold. And let's get on to our last example. Now filter is another higher order function, so again we're replacing something that's got quite a lot of power here by using a fold. So let's delete this, uh, we're gonna need an, a function because remember, a filter gets rid of elements that don't satisfy a given condition. So something that maps from um, A to Boolean is uh, checked. If it returns true, it's kept in the list. If it returns false, then we get rid of it. So for this one, I'm going to use fold R, uh, kind of in a similar way to replacing map. That's what we're going to do here. It'll need to be a little bit more uh, complex, but not much. So again, I'm working with a list, so I should probably have the empty case as my accumulator. And I should probably use x's, since that's the list I've been given. Now, fold r is going to be x, hack. So we can satisfy the type of fold r. And now we want to think about what should happen. Well, actually, this should be relatively straightforward, because the function f, to be a function for a filter, should be of type a to boolean, uh, where x is of type a here. So what I can say is f, and I'll put a bracket around it just for tidiness sake, if f of x, because that will evaluate to a boolean. So if true, then. If false, then. So then I want to return an updated accumulator, because if this is true, then I want to keep it in the list. So if this is true, then I want to do x cons ac. So I want to keep that value by sticking it onto the accumulator at the front. Else, what I'd want to do is I want to just return the accumulator, because I don't want to actually update the list if it's not true. So if f of x doesn't hold, then I get rid of x, and I'll move on to the next element in the list. Whereas if f of x holds, I'll keep x by sticking it onto the accumulator, and that'll be me. So let's try this. I want to reload that. So filter prime, and let's say we take the function even, which just takes an integer and turns a boolean if it's even. We'll take the list 1 to 5, and we'll hit enter. And you can see that two, 2 to 4 are the only ones that are kept. Similarly, we could replace this with odd. And we keep only the odd elements of the list. So we have managed to successfully replace this higher order function with our own definition using fold R. And that's quite useful. So hopefully this has shown you just how ubiquitous folds can be. You can do quite a lot to lists just by using a fold alone. Um, not that you necessarily have to define your own version of filter and map, they're already defined for you, so why wouldn't you just use them? But this is just to show you how useful folds can be. We could keep doing this for any number of prelude functions. I just wanted to show you these four because they seem to me like good examples just to show you how you can manipulate lists, how you can uh, use your accumulator to your advantage, whatever it is. But uh, this is just to show you the power of folds. Of course, if you have any questions about this, please do feel free to get in touch. Thanks.